Hey guys, I have decided to do a weekly skin giveaway because you guys have been amazing and I truly appreciate that. The price is 900 diamonds worth a giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment and I will randomly choose one. If you are selected, I will send you a direct message. But please don't leave your ID or the skin you want because I won't be picking those. Thanks and best of luck. I usually don't play Franco, but when I'm forced to tank, I usually end up picking him because he's so much fun to play. Whenever I land a hook, I get this kind of satisfaction that's hard to describe. If you want to hone the skill of prediction, Franco is a good hero to use. You are kind of like playing chess with the enemies. You always have to think what is the enemy next move. These are my builds, and this is how I set up the emblem. In this game, the opposite team has Ling, so I wanted to do something interesting and see if I could steal his blue buff. This is why we are cutting the bottom lane first. Franco is a great hero to steal their buff, or reset it at the very least, just to slow down their farm and annoy the hell out of the enemies. Unexpectedly, they decide to steal our buff instead, which was a very nice place from them. Once I saw that there's a chance to get a kill, I decided to leave the ADC for a bit, because I was pretty sure he would be fine for a while. I was about to go back to assist our marksman, but once I saw that our jawhead was still not top lane, and the lane is completely free, there's no way I'm going to lose all that farm and gold. Even as a tank, you don't want to be completely under farm, to the point that you cannot even be considered a tank because of no items. But once I see that our jawhead decides to come back top, I will immediately join the ADC. It's all about efficiency when you're playing this game. Ok, now that Johei is back to the top lane, it's time for me to either roam around or assist the carry. I'm pretty sure that you probably know about this already, but anytime you don't even try to hook, there's a miss hook. So don't be afraid of failing, be afraid of not trying. Ok, I saw that Alice used her first skill, my immediate thought process was that maybe she would try to secure the kill by teleporting to her first skill. You can see how I preemptively was spamming the ultimate even before she teleported. Even though I died, I think it was definitely worth it, because that gave even more time for her carry to keep pushing and farming. When playing Franco, it's all about anticipating the enemy next move, and waiting the bush that you think they will be approaching soon. I saw that our carry is pushing top, so I decided to back him up. Here I was thinking that their marksman would probably be coming top very soon, so I was waiting for her instead. It 
It doesn't matter that I missed the hook, because since you're already in the reach of my ultimate. Here I know the enemies are taking the red buff, and just like always, it's a gamble with no risk. If you fail to steal it, you can simply back off. I was able to hook the red buff minion, but unfortunately his HP was low, but not low enough for me to kill it with the hook. When I play Franco, I like to annoy the enemies a lot. I will be just constantly roaming around the map. Believe it or not, it subconsciously instills fears into the enemies. Looking at Link's movement, he definitely was gonna try to steal the crap with his retribution. A lot of times, Tanks players tend to think that because they are the tank, they are immune to getting engaged first, so they tend to get cocky and out of position from time to time. Here I saw that Kerry was coming top, and by looking at the map, I was pretty sure the Lolita was way out of position. You have to learn when the tanks are out of position and punish them. Here no hitting and letting our Kerry get the last hit, because she has the assassin emblem. I thought maybe Link would try to defend top, so I went back top in case Link decided to engage our marksman. Here I'm telling my teammates not to take the turtle and instead take the lord since he is about to spawn at minute 9 and we are way ahead. But unfortunately, my teammates didn't watch my best tips and tricks video, which I explained in full detail why you should not kill the turtle after minute 7 if you are completely dominating the opposite team. Here I was about to recall back to base to defend top because Link was pushing it, but once I saw her carry in danger, I had to try to save her. I could body block Kimmy's attack and slow down their speed seeing I had dominance eyes and my second skill as well. This game was pretty back and forth. We kept doing some silly mistake, like being out of position. Since they lost two heroes, I decided to chase them, and I know I run way faster than they do. You have to learn when to be aggressive and punish the enemies. You cannot always play passive, you need to know when to push your advantage. Pay attention here, imagine if I kept walking straight, our carry wouldn't have been able to reach him on time before he gets some energy back and you escape with his first skill.
Once again, their tank is out of position. You must take advantage of those mistakes and punish them. That's the only way to secure the victory. I wanted to recall back to defend top, but there was a chance that Kaguya will try to go back to the umbrella. Here instead of helping Carries take the Lord, which he can easily solo it, it's better to secure a perimeter so no enemies can try to steal it. The Johe is starting to give me the vibe that he will probably want to start trolling, so I immediately decide to buy the anti throw potion. Stay in the back in case the Link tries to jump into one of my carries and I can just simply hook him out. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment for a chance to win a skin. Thanks, and see you until the next time.